Welcome back everyone. This is Tropical Update for Thursday, August the 14th. As is typical for this time of the year, the tropics are starting to heat up and we have two areas of weather to talk to you about today. Starting first with this new area that has been introduced into our outlook for the western portions of the Gulf. It has an overall low chance of 20% or one in five of tropical development or tropical cyclone development, if you will. But what's more important is regardless of development, as it moves off to the northwest in the general vicinity of Texas, it could produce some local, local flooding and heavy rains over the next couple of days. So if you're watching us here for coastal Texas uh, do keep an eye on this system. Now what many of you are probably tuning in to uh, hear about Tropical Storm Aaron. We've been following it for several days. Um, it's out over the central Atlantic here um, and so currently a tropical storm wind speeds 60 miles per hour moving off to the west rather briskly at this point and it's going to make a gradual turn more towards the north tonight tomorrow taking it in a general uh, direction to the north of the northern Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. North of them, however, close enough that they may experience some impacts, primarily in the form of some locally gusty winds and some potential heavy rain. So let's take a look at that a bit uh, more closely, zooming in here. This is the chance of tropical storm force winds, the probability, the chance of tropical storm force winds. And you can see here over Puerto Rico, generally a 20 to 30% chance of tropical storm force winds. And then a little bit higher over the northern uh, Leeward Islands. So for the British Virgin Islands, um, 40 to 50% chance of tropical storm force winds. So if you're watching from in here, you really need to be paying close attention to see how exactly that might pan out over the next couple days. Any deviation in the track could change the narrative quite a bit. Now, a lot of you are interested in and asking about what happens after that. So you can see here's the five-day forecast of Aaron turning more towards the north over the western Atlantic and strengthening potentially quite a bit, potentially becoming a major hurricane over the western portions of the Atlantic. Note that the forecast doesn't go beyond that because we can't accurately predict the track of cyclones beyond that. So we're too early, too early to be talking about any uh, impacts to the east coast of the United States from wind or rain or storm surge, just way, way too early. But what we do know at this stage is as Aaron moves into the western Atlantic and strengthens, it's going to produce a large wave field. That's this really bright image I have behind me here. The brighter colors here indicate higher ocean waves, potentially up to 35 feet. Imagine that, a 35 foot wave. As those waves move towards the east coast of the United States, it's going to produce a big rip current risk later in the weekend, early next week. So if you're going to the beach later this weekend, early next week, you got beach plans, you really have to pay attention. And this threat, and this is important, this threat is going to materialize regardless of the exact track. So even if Aaron moves further offshore, further closer to shore, that rip current risk is going to be present. So always swim near a lifeguard, always check the local beach hazard information, and you can get all of that and more at hurricanes.gov.